Yo, welcome into another episode of It's Capturing the Game, the Game Within the Game podcast featuring me, your host, Desmond Jones. I'm a man, it's the one and only, Jawan Polo Man Stewart. Today we got another special guest in the building. But before we get into it, I want to remind the audience and listeners that Capturing the Game is presented by Capital Sports Agency, where the CEO and founder is Shanta Swift Jones. Now that we got the introductions out the way, let's go ahead and talk about today's guest. Today's guest, he is from Fort Wayne. He is the mental performance guru. His name is Donovan Martin. Donovan, how you doing, man? Just fine, man. Appreciate you guys having me on tonight. This is awesome. I appreciate you, you know, taking time out of your day to to meet with us, you know, especially uh, you being from, are you originally from Fort Wayne or are you just currently just living in Fort Wayne? So I actually grew up in Auburn. I went to DeKalb, okay. um, so about 35, 40 minutes north of Fort Wayne. And then uh, after college and graduate school, I came back here um, and I've been here ever since. Yep. Okay. Well, we still treat you like your own. So, you know, it's nice right. to <laughs> nice to, you know, have four wing people on the podcast, especially we can put them on. Um, so and spread that message. Mm-hmm. So, but you know, as we all do everything customary, so here in Capture the Game, Donovan, can you go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Yeah, for sure. So, like I said, I grew up in Auburn, went to DeKalb, and then from there I went down to uh Indiana State where I was a psych major, uh, played rugby down there, and then um, went to Chicago, the Illinois School of Psychology. And I kind of had a little odd experience there where I was in a doctoral program. And so I was there for four years. And then uh, my school got literally bought out by what's called Argosy. And so I kind of pivoted there and said, well, I've got the master's plus some, so I'm going to go get a job get my license, make a little money. Uh, I was tired of being a broke college kid. So uh, <laughs> found a gig back home-ish um, up in Noble County. Did that thing for about five years where I went from being just a therapist, working with kids um, all the way up to a director and was doing state policy stuff and directing programs for kids and families in four counties and all that. And on the side there, the last couple of years, I was at a place in Fort Wayne that's been around forever called Dunn Associates. It's a private practice in town. And then it all just kind of came together in 2009. Um, I, I bought that practice and, and became the CEO of that. And that's really what I look at that practice as kind of my platform. And that's where I decided to kind of build everything from there. And so from that point, it's gone on to um, back in the day, I was a sports psych guy for AWP. Um, and I've been with Traction since it's been around. Um, I'm the sports psych mental performance guy for Purdue Fort Wayne Athletics. So I cover all the sports there, but I also spend a lot of time with just men's basketball and women's basketball, but primarily men's basketball. Um, and then My brand is Donovan Martin Mental Performance, and that's what I do most of my consulting work through. So I manage a private practice and then have these different relationships and provide the consultation pretty much across the country, depending on the athlete situation. So there's a lot of things there to unpack. Oh, geez, I got an echo. Sound like I had an echo. Maybe I didn't. Okay. It's a lot of things to unpack there. So you said you played rugby. How was that experience in college? Rugby? Yeah. So uh, if you can believe it, I actually started out as a tennis player, but that went pretty bad. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I didn't have the, the right personality for that. I love the sport, nothing against tennis. Um, so rugby at Indiana State was uh, a, a pretty great experience, man. Um, rugby was, it's a rough sport, kind of. I mean, it looks rough, but you got to remember the guy hitting you doesn't have pads on either. So, um, but rugby is a real, like, it's a brotherhood kind of game. It's a, it's, it, you create a lot of bonds in that sport because of what it is. And there's a lot of traditions and things that go along with the game of rugby. So I absolutely love the sport. Um, I think it's an amazing sport. I had a great time playing it. Um, when I went up to Chicago, I, I joined a men's team up there and got a lot of humbling experiences and was down on the 
the C squad, you know, it does A is the best. So right. you can do that pretty good. Um, but no, I just loved it. Um, I got to learn a lot of different positions and, and played several. And so, yeah, I think it's a wonderful sport. But the brotherhood of it is what really uh, sets it over the top for me. You still playing any sports right now? Uh, no, man. Like, one, my family's pretty big and I've got all these gigs. But I will tell you, I'm, I'm dedicated. Um, I'm a 5.30 a.m. six days a week at the gym hour and a half uh, I haven't missed in like I don't know since 2013 so yeah so I, I, I right still there. get after it I just don't I don't play a sport you said 5 30 a.m absolutely yep yeah man that's grind time like so when I was on my kick my, my kick of cutting that cutting weight and working out mm -hmm. I was in the gym either between 5 30 4 30 in the morning Mm -hmm. at least five at least five days a week monday through friday that's where you can find me at yep I, I did that for about i did that for about about five months and then i, I kind of flamed out so that's my zen that's my time I lasted about three weeks. Quiet. <laughs> well i don't i mean i guess i'll throw this out there I, there's a reason i go like that and and it's kind of the thing that got me from doing therapy and psych into full-on like performance work mm -hmm. in psychology which in 2013 i had kidney cancer and uh i went through a pretty pretty rough patch there and so uh when it was all said and done i was 147 pounds and I'm like 212 today i think um so for me it's a different kind of workout it's it's knowing that when that when that day comes again and they they give you that news again, I'm ready for that fight, and and that's the way I approach it. So I'm not, I don't go there to work out. I go there to get ready to fight. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's um. Sorry, man. <laughs> no, no, no. That's that's good because I mean that I was gonna say how you've been in what remission for how long now with it? I guess. Since 2013 2013 so yeah. we got seven eight eight years eight, is that eight yeah so yeah you know con, you know i can't say congrats to that but you know hopefully that stays in remission and you know but like you said if, if it does you're ready so i mean that's your mentality that's the that mental the mental side of it that you that you got in intact so kudos to you man so well i failed man like that's um so my specialty is, is the type of anxiety that high achieving people have. Mm. So I'm gonna, I didn't, now I didn't say performance anxiety. I'm not talking about butterflies in your stomach before you right. take a right. test or go perform. I'm talking about like the personality, the type of person it takes to be a pro athlete, to be a high level surgeon, to be a CEO, to be a really successful entrepreneur. Like you have to be a certain kind of person to pull that off. And, and there's fewer people like that than there are the majority. So in psych, we always want to study the outliers, right? We don't want to study the majority of people. We want to study the, the, the fewer because that, that you learn more that way. So these people work a certain way. And, and I had studied that. And I, I was at that point in my career, I was, I was really passionate about building like a, like my unique, my own model. Cause I didn't want to just come to the table with, Hey, I've read these 10 books and here's what I've read from. Them. You can read the same 10 books I've read. If you, if you do my job, you got to come with something more than that. You got to have something unique. You got to have something impactful. You got to have something that people can connect with. And most of all, it's got to be useful. You know, I'm always trying to work myself out of a job. <laughs> like, like you should fire me when we're, you see, you know what I'm saying? Like we build a relationship so that we can come back and forth, but like you're coming to do a job. You're not coming just to share your feelings. That's not my style. So what I found out through that cancer experience was that I failed miserably because like I did everything that you shouldn't do. I got told I had cancer and then I lied to my wife about it and was like by omission. I didn't lie like directly. I just kind of 
uh, avoided a few questions <laughs> and <laughs> and no joke man he told me i had cancer and they're like you need to schedule a surgery and i'm like i'm busy it's gonna be like three months from now so i i scheduled a surgery three months out and then they called my house and talked to my wife who is an rn and she's like can you tell me what's going on and they read the chart back and she called me and had me like in my office because when you're doing my job like you don't get interrupted unless there's something for real where'd you see so she like interrupts me and she's like you got surgery next wednesday and i got pissed like i was like what are you doing no uh mm -mm." and uh so needless to say she won that battle for sure and then we got to the hospital and uh you know it's like five in the morning i'm like there's a there's a lady here there's my wife here there's an old lady over there I've seen in the movies, you just go in the, you go in the bathroom, you slip out the window, no sweat. There's no windows in that bathroom, by the way, at that hospital. And uh, when your wife's a nurse, she'll just walk in there and get your ass. And then, um, yeah, this was really embarrassing. So then the, the biggest failure was probably because, and this will make sense here in a second, why it ties in the anxiety stuff, but like the biggest failure of that day was uh, this, this wonderful patient amazing nurse came and she's like i'm gonna start your iv and i'm like you get one chance she's like what do you mean i'm like you miss i'm putting that needle in your neck she's like okay goes and gets my wife <laughs> you're gonna find out my wife is like the hero she's the saint of all this and then uh i fought him right to the end man i'm like i'm not taking my wedding ring. You, you're gonna have to i'd rather die you know and they're like what so they waited patiently till I fell asleep and then uh, took it off and put it back on. And in this whole process, man, I, um, I met this amazing doctor who's like the, the fifth best robotic surgeon in the world, you know, and started to get to know him and started doing all this stuff. And I, my model kind of came together because if you think about this anxiety stuff and these high achieving people, what, they, what they're really, really good at is they're really good at being in control. And when they can't control something, they're pretty good at avoiding it. And they kind of run the show, you know? They kind of make life kind of go the way they want. And they're good at it. And then life gives you a situation that's uncontrollable and unavoidable. And I cracked, man. I just, I couldn't do it. I, I had the whole story I just told you. But from that point forward, that's what I mean when I go to the gym every day. You won't get you. That ain't going to happen again. Mm-mm. I'll walk right in there and be like, let's go. Here's the arm. Stick it. Here's the arm. <laughs> you know, like, let's do it. Because you can prepare yourself for that. You can train for that. And so that's how you learn from failure. And that's, that's what that's about. So you're not trying to be perfect. <clears throat> you're trying to learn how to be self-aware and then self-regulate the, the emotions so that you can perform. I just didn't perform well on that day. Maybe a couple of days. <laughs> so, wow. so that's kind of how it all came together. Wow. So was it was it after you went through through that? Did you begin? You went out to uh, <clears throat> go get your own your own um, practice. I couldn't think of the word. No, that's what made it so terrifying. Is I I had bought the practice in '09, so I I seriously I had. You know, I had bought this massive practice. I have a wife. I have two kids, babies, little kids. I mean, I, um, I was so weak at one point, I couldn't pick up my son. You know, it, it was it was pretty bad. So the pressure of it was really massive, man, because I had to run that practice. I, I scheduled myself off for a week. Like I told my, my staff, I'm like, I'm only going for a week. Like, I can't be gone that long. We got to make money. We got to run this thing. We got to do our thing, you know, control, right? I'm going to run the show. I'm going to drive the ship. I, it's my, like, you guys count on me. I got to make it happen. So, um, yeah, I was in a pretty bad situation there. But like most things, um, you over worry, you over, you know, analyze it, you, you over feel and freak out about it. And then, I think in those instances, that's where I kind of think faith pops in there and it all worked out, man. And that's bigger than me for sure. I, I, you know, God helped us there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 
Um, man, faith plays a big part in everything that we do, and I truly mm-hmm. believe that. Um, which I'm gonna ask a faith question later if we get a chance to get to it. But I, I do want to ask, you know, and talk about. So you, you, I call you, I call you the the mental performance guru. You know, and can you talk to us? You know what it means to like what what it entails. Like, I I feel like this this conversation is like way above a pay grade. So I'm trying to, I don't know, me in the middle. But you right. know, talk. You know, talk talk to us about mental performance. What does it mean? Yeah, so mental performance has a lot to do with really helping an athlete or a high achieving person. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And so what it really has a lot to do with is this idea that you got to learn about yourself. Uh, and so you have to start to look at how do I function as a human? And one of the most normal things, and I think this is probably a good lead in here that you hear from, especially athletes, is you'll ask them a question about emotions and, and not like a touchy feely question. That's not my style. Like, but just like, uh, you know, what's this mean to you? And you'd expect them to give you some answer that like they love it. They care about it. They're passionate about it. There's some, some emotional type words. And what you hear from athletes most often is if you break people down into you got what you think, what you feel, and what you do, you're going to hear a bunch of answers about thinking, doing, and environment, situations, scenarios, mm-hmm. relationships between coaches and players and things like that. Um, and then you're like, yeah, but you never said the feeling word, man. And they're like, oh, yeah, well, it feels uh, bad <laughs> or good. <laughs> And you're like, one word, you got one word. So a lot of what I do in the very beginning is I help athletes and individuals start to understand that the concept here is that you've been an anxious person your whole life. And so because of that, you keep building up a tolerance to the emotion of anxiety. So like you used to get nervous when you were a little kid to go to practice. You don't get nervous to go practice anymore. You used to get nervous when you go play a game. You don't really get that nervous anymore. You used to get nervous when you'd be in a playoff. Well, you've done that. But if you think about it, every time you step up a level, that resets, mm-hmm. right? So you go from middle school to high school to college, so on and so forth. That whole process resets. And so as you progress through these different scenarios, your anxiety, you just build up this tolerance. And so what that basically means is that You know, you don't think about like what color eyes you got. You don't think about being right or left handed unless something happens, unless you got a problem, somebody draws attention to it, then you focus on it. So what these high achieving people do is their tolerance level so high that by the time they actually recognize they're anxious, they're already up in like severe somatic panic somatics where you feel it like physically right like you start bouncing your knee or you feel it muscle tension butterflies in the stomach that kind of stuff so they don't even recognize it till they're really high up there and then they're like oh man this is bad well when you're when your mind or your emotions excuse me get up that high and they get volatile then your mind goes out you can't focus on you you focus on everything around you And then you try to find different ways to get control or avoidance because that pulls the emotion down, right? If I can sneak out that window, I'm straight. Still got cancer, but for that moment, I feel better, damn it. And that's all that matters. So you see that a lot in all kinds of stuff in sports and in life and in all kinds of different situations and scenarios. And so what I'm trying to help athletes understand is you want that tolerance level to stay high so that when you walk on that field or that court or whatever in that situation, you don't freak out. You can handle that. But you want your self-awareness so that you know, like, okay, I actually need my emotion to be down here in like the moderate range because that's where that zone thing is. And so now I need to know what that feels like because the zone by definition is a feeling. Just like muscle memory is a feeling that's why when a basketball player shoots the ball they know if it's in or out before anybody else does because they know what it feels like so if you regulate that feeling and you dial that thing in that's step one dial it in step two lock it in and then you got to hold it there for the duration of the performance not an easy thing to do but that's essentially what we're trying to teach you how to do is be self-aware 
then self-regulate so that you can lock that in. And when you can do that, then you have the ability to continuously go into uncomfortable situations. So you can on purpose put yourself into difficult situations that would push the anxiety up. And that's going to facilitate the most growth possible. Because most of the time it's your emotion that makes you hesitate or pull back. So if you know you can regulate that, then you go through and you're, you'll end up being equally distributed across think, feel, do. And if you can play with all three, then you obviously have the advantage over people that play with just two. So is that like a triangle, the proven triangle that I'm kind of, I've been reading to see some things, did some research. So proven triangle, that's what that triangle is there. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. Gotcha. So Makes that's sense. what we do. And then, uh, you know, it's kind of that, that would be like, you consider that like a class, right? Like, like it's a discussion. It's not really a class. I shouldn't say it that way because most everything we do, you take this construct, but then it has to be personal, right? That, like every person, like when you talk about things like your goal or self-talk or like even the breathing and the visualization, these are all different skills that every mental performance person uses. The key to all those is there's a, there's a twist on those that you got to do them a certain way, but you also have to make them personal. Like each one of us would have our own self-talk because it's going gonna, it's gonna to connect to an emotion. And it's always going to come back to that. If your self-talk is just trying to battle thoughts in your head, you're actually going to make yourself worse. Because now you just got conflicting thoughts. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. That doesn't work. You got to dial up a thought that regulates the emotion to bring it back into the zone. That's the whole purpose of the self-talk. So a lot of what I do with athletes is develop that relationship so that we can get into some personal stuff so that we can take that personal stuff, that unique life that they have, all the good stuff and all the bad stuff and turn it into fuel. And you use that fuel to, to regulate those emotions. So we take anything and everything, you know, sometimes it's because you haven't had enough challenge in your life. And sometimes it's because you came up in a way where you've been surviving your whole life. So it just depends on that person and, and what they're going to tap into to perform at that next level. So I guess so, let me ask you when I think of athletes that hit that next level mm -hmm. like is that mental or is that the physical side of things because i seen it seems like from just me viewing sports and seeing how different players hit different thresholds and they can't break through that ceiling or whatever the case is most of mm -hmm. it, it seems like it's mental like mm -hmm. they want to get through it but they're like i, I don't know how to I, I don't know where it's at but it seems like mm -hmm. once they break that mold or get through that ceiling it's like at this point, you we don't know what the limit is. At this point, he he's in a whole other zone. He's in, he way out there right now. We gotta let him do his thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think it comes back to honestly, it, it's what you just said. Is it is it mental or is it physical? It's not. It's it's all three. Mm. When you when you can break through those plateaus, you figured out how to get all three parts to work together. You you've maximized all three of them. Your emotions are right there. Your mindset's right there, your focus, your intensity of your mind, and then your body is peak. I mean, you're, you're ready to go. Right. That's why if you listen to like The Last Dance and you listen to how Jordan made things, he made it personal. Yeah. Well, when he says I made it personal, he's talking about emotion. He's like, I care now. And now that I care, you're in trouble because my mind is so focused and my body is in supreme shape, you're in trouble now. Because hmm. he already knew he was the best, right? So you got to right. find something else to care about. Yeah. Huh. I, it, like I said, look, this. I, I'm looking at Juwan. He over there thinking like, yeah. Well, no, because that, you know what that makes me think of, right? You know, I'm an anime person. So, right, you know where I'm going. Okay, I'm, I'm, Dragon Ball Z. Goku, when he hit Ultra Instinct, body, yeah. mind, and all that, just all, it's just free. You doing your thing. Like, yep. every yep. movement is just, is, it's just, you, you good. Like, it don't matter. You know you the best. Like, I, I mean, that's, that's what it sounds like to me. 
So and one then, another, you're right. One yeah. way to really think about this is a lot of people when they think about emotion, they think about like this, like intensity or almost like an aggression or a violence yeah. or something like that. It's actually security. You feel whole. Like I'm, this is where I belong. I'm secure right here. This is my house, you know, like I got my blanket. I got my stuff. Like I'm, this is mine. Y'all, I don't know why anybody else is even here. So like, you know what I mean? So like there's a fire and an intensity to it, but underneath there, there's also this kind of weird piece where it's like, all right. Cause they like it. You got to think about the feelings I'm talking about. Like it's a good feeling. And that's really what it is. At some level, it doesn't become about winning. It becomes about chasing that feeling. How much can I get? How often can I get it? That's how they learn to challenge themselves. That's why you don't want to just go to practice. If you go to practice and just practice, you didn't get that feeling. So one of the term, one of the concepts I use with guys all the time is I say, and usually this is after we've built a relationship and I can confront them a little bit. And especially if I'm with them while they're training at a practice or a combine training or something like that, and they get done, you just listen to them and listen to how they describe it. And especially if they're tired, because they'll, they'll be, they'll start talking in ways where they're like, oh man, I'm good, man. I'm glad that's over. Let's, uh, you know, and all this. And I'm like, you, you feel a little relieved that that's over. They're like, yep. I'm like, that's because you didn't do that shit right. Because you can't feel achievement and relief. Can't. So you decide you want relief. Okay. You're not getting paid. Mm. Okay. Ooh, okay. Um, it's a lot of stuff actually, here. Yeah, oh, it okay. is. Like yeah, it is. It is. It is. And I'm trying to I'm trying to think about one next question. Like I'm over here trying to rank questions. Like, all right, I got this much time left. Which one I need to ask? Next. Which one? Which one I need to ask next? Um, I do want to ask. So, for anyone in general, so whether it be an athlete or, um, like just a regular old person, regular dudes like me and Jamal per se, you know, what are some signs that you know someone can look to it to understand or know that they may be struggling, you know, mentally? Yeah, sure. So I think there's two sides to that answer. On the on the performance side. You're going to look for one of two maybe situations or scenarios. One is going to be a plateau. So you're you're going and you're a high-level athlete or a high-level whatever you might be, and you just you're hitting that wall. You just can't pass through it. That's usually a sign where where you because most of the time they're going to go through the mindset stuff and they're going to try some body stuff. And so then Mental is almost always last for a lot of reasons. Um, but eventually when they, when they come to realize, well, maybe I'll talk to somebody about the mental side of it. That's usually what helps them through that plateau. Um, but I also think there's a side of athletes where you have athletes that are kind of coming up and you got certain, especially in youth, you have quite a few kids out there that they, they're just kind of this thirst for knowledge. They just want to know, like, how do I be great? How do I do it? And, it? and that's a different kind of style, right? Because their, their maturity level and things are only at a certain level. So you can't deliver that whole package, but you can deliver, you know, the nuggets and the little pieces that are going to help them along that way. And that's why it's so great to like work with like traction and, and organizations like that, where you're working with young kids all the way up to, you know, they got guys playing on Sunday now. So um, it's, a, it's a cool thing to kind of, give little pieces along the way there. So um, I think you, you look on the sports side for people that are struggling coming up, you look for that plateau. Um, one other thing that just kind of come to mind here with the sports side of things is you're going to look for those people that put way too much pressure on themselves, the perfectionistic people. Um, you know, we've all, you've probably heard the Michael Phelps stories and things like that. Um, so people that are like actually too intense, too over the top, perfectionistic, because you got to worry about those people because they're going to crack at some point. So these are people, you know, you think sports psych, we're going to dial you up. These are actually people we dial back. And, and so 
any way you look at it, we're just trying to dial you or help you dial yourself more accurately to where it's optimal. Now there's a second set of, of that answer too, which is just your mental health. And that's outside of performance, right? And so <clears throat> I say this often, but you know, I, I don't get a lot of phone calls from a pro athlete asking me how to do their job better. That, you, you, I mean, come on. When, it, when it's pro athlete discussion, you, hopefully you have a relationship with them. And it, oftentimes that's off the, off the court, off the field things. How do I, how do I deal with this, Don? Or this is messing with my head. I don't know what to do about this. And so you start going into like just relationships and bouts of depression for, you know, because they deal with such pressure and things like that over the course of time, they just kind of fold for a little bit. It doesn't make sense because they're happy. They've got everything they need, but it sets in. And so you just kind of help them through what most human beings go through that kind of messes with your mental health. And so really the key is that relationship so that you can help that person on both sides. Because really, if you're a competitor, if you're, if you're the kind of person I'm talking about, you want to perform well, like in your marriage, you want to perform well in your business. You, like these people don't approach things to just do them halfway. So when they're not doing, when they're not performing well, that bothers them. And so it's, it's a wonderful thing. And in, in my field, I feel very privileged to be able to help them on both sides of that. John got to look like, yo. <laughs> well, cause I got so many, like, it's a lot of questions that I could ask. Like, cause like, I'm, I'm curious to like, I want to digest certain pieces. I know we coming up on time, but like, you know, just certain pieces of that, that like all the stuff that you said from like basketball because like with me being a laker fan and you know i'm i'm a, a russ you know westbrook fan at the end of the day like and i see what's going on in la like how the media is doing my man's like granted some of it is is warranted but most of it i'm like okay this is that has to be draining that man's mental health like on a daily basis like even if he plays well he's getting scrutinized like how does how do you channel that to suit up every night and still have to hear about trade rumors and you need your washed, you're this, you're that. Like, I, I just couldn't imagine being a player like that. Like any pl a professional athlete on that level and know that you're going to be scrutinized for every little thing you do. I just, I, I don't understand they do it. Like, I just don't get it. I think they learn how to use it. True. It's not... The, that whole idea is that we a lot of people think that they try and push that out, protect themselves from it, create a bubble, things yeah. like that. And I think we all know that that's, especially in today's world, that's almost impossible. Right. I mean, I, I don't know that you can pull that off. Um, I mean, there's going to be people by your driveway yelling at you, taking <laughs> your pictures and stuff, right? So, like, um, I think they what they do is they really find a way – to kind of detach from it in a sense, like, like I'm not going to take it personal, but I'm going to use it. So, you know, I think that's where we go back to what I just said. You got to detach so it doesn't screw up your personal life, but in your professional life, uh, that's rocket fuel right there. Yeah. They're giving you everything you need. Mm. You should thank them mm. right after you dunk. <laughs> mm, or over rudy too no all right so look all right so look we, i know we're cutting it close on time um i want to make sure we get a rapid fire in um so we're gonna go ahead and switch over to a rapid fire round so we can close out these next couple of minutes so it's the game within the game segment we have to i'm, I'm gonna have to try to come back and, and do like a part two session because i feel like it's tons of stuff that we're missing out on and um but yeah, anyway, so it's the game within the game segment. So we're gonna ask these rapid fire questions. We won't try to do a follow up and try to have an inner conversation in between that. We're gonna try to get these questions. We just questions in and out and uh move on. So my first question is, are you ready to play? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. All right, all right let's do this. So your very first choice is chocolate chip cookies, oatmeal raisin, sugar cookie, snickerdoodle, or oatmeal chocolate chip. Oh, uh, old school chocolate chip. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Unless it's breakfast time, then oatmeal raisin. Ah, 
That makes sense. Uh, plot twist. It's the healthy cookie. Yeah. All right. So your next one is TV shows or movies? Movies. Favorite movie? Oh. All time or right now? Right now. Right now. I hate to even admit it, but I, I kind of got into this Daniel Craig jo- James Bond kick for some reason. So I'm rewatching them all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, who was your who normally we ask like your top five in the NBA, but I'm gonna keep it broad. I wanna I wanna ask who are your favorite five athletes. Favorite five athletes of all time or currently? Sorry. Both. Yeah, either either or. Uh Andre Agassi, Muhammad Ali, um, Joe Montana. I gotta do it, man. Conchar and mm, probably a tie between Jordan Fuller, Jesse Bates, and Skaronic. Okay. Okay. Those boys work their butts off. They need it. That they deserve every little little bit. All right. So this is gonna be a football question for you then. What you got in the Super Bowl? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Being a Fort Wayne native, I know we got both. We got one on Signs. each team. So right. you know, I, you know, I'm just curious. And and I'll be honest with you, um, some players I'm not allowed to talk about their names and stuff like that because it's confidential. But yeah, gotcha. uh, Jordan Fuller on the on the Rams, man, that guy, like, he's my guy. He hooked me up with like a shout out in Sports Illustrated and all this stuff. So it's hard for me to go against the Rams, but Jesse is Jesse. You know, like he's yeah. Jesse. <laughs> How do you go? He's yeah. the nicest guy in the world, and he's yeah. just a badass. So, um, oh, man, I just hope it doesn't come down to the last play against, you know, a bomb to Skronik and Jesse's garden. How about that? I'm taking, I'm taking the Bengals, though. I, I got taking the Bengals. I'm with you there. I'm going to take the, I'm okay. taking the Bengals with you, so. I, hey, we, we can always re-record your pick because that's <laughs> going to be out by the time. No, dis- so yeah. <laughs> no disrespect to my guys on the Rams, man. No, 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 so, uh, uh, If you can go pro in any sport, what would it be? Go pro in any sport, what would it be? Oh, yeah. I'd be a New Zealand All Black in a second. If I could be a pro, yeah. Okay. That's a rugby team. Sorry. I, must say, okay. I already knew. I knew where it was. I, 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 was like, I, 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 figured, I knew what this was. I, 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 figured, I figured it was. I figured yeah, if you look that up, man, look up the Haka and look up – like that's the most successful team in all of team sports. They, they've they won like – I think it's like 82% of their games. Yeah. That's disgusting. Oh, dude, they're, they're crazy. <laughs> they're good. Yeah, yeah they're, like they're it's a good. different animal. Now, you can't – I could never be an all-black because you have to have like New Zealand blood in your body. Like you have to be – tied oh, to wow. the country and they won't let you do it um but if i could be a pro in any sport That'd that would be me. my gig right there mm-hmm. okay okay um next question would be if you could take over any organization other than your own who would you choose the person i would choose no no just the organization so i mean we talking oh notre dame football okay yeah, solid choice. I haven't missed a game in 15 years. Okay. Seriously, except for the COVID year, they wouldn't let me come in. But <laughs> they they should they probably still should have you come in. Hey, we need this guy here. I there was a plan to try and get into See? that uh, that uh, um, SEC game or the the now I'm blanking on it. Oops. Um, it's sorry, like the bowl game. No, the the guy with the long hair, Clemson. Sorry, when they played Clemson oh, and they yeah, beat him okay. in the double or triple overtime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a yeah. tough one to not try and figure a way up there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So that last question, uh, I think we have. So, um, your favorite sports moment that you've seen or witnessed? Um. Well, 
the stand, um, Notre Dame, Stanford, when on the goal line, when Teo stopped them uh, for two main reasons. One, huge Notre Dame fan. Two, uh, Teo's whole family was sitting right next to us. And three, that was one of the last games I got to go to with my dad. So um, by far, that's always going to be my one of my favorites. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, all right. Before, you know, this is actually truly the hardest question of all. You know, where can people follow follow you and keep up with your career and keep up with everything that you have going on? Oh, yeah. So I've got a website, Donovan Martin Mental Performance dot com. Um, <clears throat> um, you can check out Traction Athletic Performance. I'm a partner with them. Um, my phone number is on all those places. Two six zero four one seven twenty eight fifty. Uh, text, call, anytime. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, same kind of thing. Uh, I think I'm Irish Fiji on Twitter. So I'm pretty much around if you want to find me. It's not hard. So, yep. I got you. I got you. Uh, Dominic, so listeners, you heard it here. Go ahead, follow Dominic Man. Go ahead and Give him an email, visit out, visit him, go find him, and keep up with everything you got going on. While you're at it, go ahead, follow Capturing the Game podcast on your favorite social media platform, whether it be Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. That's uh, CTG underscore podcast. On YouTube, it's Capturing the Game podcast. On uh, Facebook, it's Capturing the Game podcast. Um, Donovan, it's been dope to get a chance to you know catch up with you. Uh, hopefully that we can uh, try to reconnect at another time to and go go further into some of the stuff that was yeah some of the stuff that we was talking about today that'd be awesome man i appreciate the time and the opportunity i love the, the discussion and yeah i'm always up for a for a follow-up round two we can dive into some more stuff